Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today, here in Arizona, we are with my friend Eddie X, who has bought this fabulous Corvette Z06, or Z06, of course, for me. This particular car is very highly specced. The Z07 package, we also have a set of Vossen wheels. It's painted in rapid blue, but have a look at the interior of this, the stunning dual tone blue. It is a lovely, lovely looking thing. And today we're gonna to be catching up with Eddie. We're gonna go out for a little drive. He'll take the wheel first. Then afterwards, I'm gonna hop behind the wheel myself. As you can see, we're up in some mountains outside of Phoenix to get a small feel for what this is like. The most powerful naturally aspirated V8 in the world. 670 horsepower from the 5.5 liter V8 back there. The ultimate current flagship version, you could say, of the C8 platform Corvette. So let's do this. Let's bring Eddie in. Let's have a look at this, his new Z06, and go find out what it's like. Eddie, how's it going? What's up, Tim? Good to see you. Good to see you too. This time on your side of the pond. Yes. Last time we caught up over in the UK at the Shoe Museum. Now we're on American soil. And congratulations. On my Z06, thank you. I absolutely love this car. We've got almost 1,200 miles on it, so we're through break-in, which means we unlock the full rev range. 5.5 yeah. liter flat plane crank V8, 8,600 RPM. So yeah. it's because it's electronically limited up to 500 or 1,000? 500 miles, and it was like, I don't know, like 6,000 RPM. It was low, right? Yeah. And it was like, it took so much self-control to not have, like, it took control. But yeah. now I can rev it to almost 9,000 RPM, and it's amazing. I love high-revving NA motors, right? R8 V10, Shelby 350R, and now this. Yeah. That's actually a really, I hadn't really considered that. You have three NA. very nice NA engines. Yeah, I'm a very responsible adult with three rear wheel drive sports cars and I live in Chicago. I mean, we're in Arizona now, but I live in Chicago. So. Where the weather is. Where, yeah, eh. where, where my RWS R8 has winter tires on it. But okay. this car here, it came out to Arizona to properly enjoy because and it's today, warm. at the top of the mountains today, it's actually snowing. Yeah. I'm just going to point out. <laughs> so we had to make a couple of plan adjustments because it is a high-powered rear-wheel drive sports car and snow doesn't mix well with summer tires. But Okay, so talk about this for a moment. Z06. Obviously, Corvettes have often had, as this has, the Stingray. The Z06 is like the track version that follows. Yeah. Yours is super high spec, I think. Uh, I would actually say moderate high spec because yeah. you can go crazy with options on these. Base price for the coupe was right around 106, I think. This is a 3LZ, which means a nice interior and tech and sound system, stuff yeah. like that. But on the outside, you see the carbon fiber canards with the full carbon aero pack and the bigger carbon wing out back. That means this is a Z07 and you can option either exposed carbon weave or painted carbon flash metallic. I went with the exposed carbon because it looks amazing. Yeah. It is a coupe, but that means removable tar hard top. This will come off and it fits in the trunk. And the engine's back there now. That's the big change for the C8. We're not taking that off today. It's fine. No, it is way too cold. I was wearing a scarf earlier today. Which... But one of the most interesting things I think about this is it's instantly, when you just hear it, oh, yeah. completely different to the regular Stingray. It's Should a I, different car. Do you want me to start it? Oh yeah, right now. cheesy. We have a remote start. <laughs> <laughs> That's punchy. It is aggressive. It is so, I describe it as a angry American 458. Yeah, Because high revving, it just screams. It's got that hard edge sound to it. And I absolutely love it because it's unlike any other Corvette ever. And I know that upsets some purists, but for me, I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love this thing. But that's just the normal start, that yeah. loud. Yeah, yeah. Just like kicking in. What, is there like an even louder mode? I mean, with inside? the cold start, I think the valves are closed. I'm gonna give it a couple of revs. Okay, yeah, let's we gotta do it. that. Let's All right. Actually, let's have a quick look at the interior before we're gonna hear it. Because I've gotta say, this is really nice, this dual tone. Why, thank you. Is there a specific name for? It's like tension dipped twilight. Uh, okay, some, some kind of complicated Blues, name. right? But the navy blue inserts, the yeah, blue bright blue, yeah. The some details. nice carbon fiber accents. You can do even more carbon fiber where the entire center console is covered in carbon, but I like to just do carbon fiber one, um, yeah. carbon fiber paddle shifters. Go on then, let's take a little listen to this. Ready when you are. Into, okay, there we so go. That was Zemo, the valves open up. Do you know what's extraordinary? What? If you didn't know, you might swear that was a 458. I've had friends, as I was pulling up around the corner, they're like, it sounded like a F8 or a 458 or something coming. And it's they very see Ferrari, very yes. European. Very, very. I mean, very. that sounds like an Italia or a, a Speciale to Absolutely. Me. And that's what Corvette benchmarked. So their yeah. goal was to build essentially an American Ferrari, and this is an American Ferrari for half the price. 
and quite MSRP, not market value. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that's value. a big caveat, right? <laughs> market value of these things right now is way over. Absolutely it's, ridiculous. It's into a different league. Can you pop open the hood? The what do you, do you call it? The hood back here? I don't even know what that's called anymore. Engine bay. Because it's simultaneously both the engine bay and the trunk. Oh, that's kind of fun. So you get the plaque on the top. Yeah. So Robert built my motor the down in response. Bowling Green, Kentucky. Which is where you took delivery, isn't it? Yes, I did Corvette Museum delivery. Never been there before. So you get to get the car delivered to you there. You feel like a VIP and they give you a tour and everything. It's pretty awesome. Like, cool experience. Because yours is in the first, like... This is know. VIN 38. 38. 38. That's I did not really expect cool. that early of a car, but the Chevy team helped out and got me VIN number 38. That's actually epic. The yeah. 38 Z06 they made, because they'll make... I don't know what the exact number is. I think it's... I don't think it's specifically limited. Right now, it's literally like supplier, um, just supply chain yeah. problems, part, things like that. That's I remember the them saying it's about 25% of production. Okay. And we know that they're ramping to 40,000 cars a year. Yeah. I'm so. curious to see. We've both seen the E-Ray now. That's the new one, right? E-Ray yeah. e makes almost as much horsepower as this. Way more torque. All-wheel drive, first electrified yeah. Corvette. But they feel totally different. Completely different personalities. I still love the Z06. Like totally different cars. Yeah. All right, let's get this closed up. Let's hop inside. Go and get ourselves Go for warm. a drive. Oh, that's that's just swish with the soft close. You know what they did for 2024? There is a soft close front trunk, yeah. which the 23 doesn't have. And that's I am so jealous of that. Well, that, well, that looked pretty smooth the well, way you just like yep, shut it down. Drop it and it closes. Camera for rear view mirror. Yep. Right. We will go get ourselves warmed up and go for a run. Watch the startup screen animation. Ooh, fancy. That's cool. You get the engine and it fades through the powertrain and the whole car shows up. That's, that's pretty cool. That's actually awesome. Yeah. I hadn't seen that before. And then we'll start her up. You feel that as well, yeah. though. Yeah. So this panel here, even the coupes, this comes off and you can put it in the rear trunk. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to say this. So many buttons. I call it the Great Wall of Corvette buttons. The Great Wall of Corvette. It's <laughs> it just divides the entire cabin. Which makes it really cool as a driver focused experience because Absolutely. everything's pointing at you. Like all of the, even the central screen, the yeah. top screen is pointing off and your driver um, seat heating and climate control are up in yes. the top half and then mine are down at the bottom. But I think what I quite like about this so far, because obviously we've driven to get to where we are right now, mm -hmm. is it's actually also a really nice comfortable road car mm -hmm. just to chill in. Which That's is, the beauty of magnetic ride suspension, right? It's, it's something dangerous. that modern cars are doing a really nice job of they can have very much dual characteristics. They can be super extreme at one end. And let's be real, this thing's fast. It is like, what's quite the fast. Under three for Top a nationally. Speed. It's like two, I think people have done two six. That's impressive. That's Top, pretty cool. speed. So the top speed actually is not that impressive. It's too only in like 190, too much arrow, too much drag, especially with the Z07. And it's not geared for that either. Yeah. This is a, they designed this to be a track road course car. So the, gearbox the standard c8 has the eight speed dct correct this is the same box but it's reprogrammed it's been there's a couple mechanical changes to strengthen some things and uh just to handle the track use that this car is supposed to see but effectively it's this eight speed dual clutch gearing changed a little bit which means quite horrific fuel economy <laughs> um, we filled up and it's showing 192 miles to empty yeah from a nearly full tank yeah and uh i've been averaging about 12 mpg and that's with like <laughs> highway driving too, so it's it's thirsty. So twelve, twelve. That's not a that's not a number for these kind of things. So suspension is reworked, I know as well. Yeah. Obviously, all dialed in way more to be more of a track car, mm -hmm. but it still has everything. It still has the PDR. It has all of mm -hmm. the safety systems. It has all of the the tech and. Honestly, that's something I really love about this. It has supercar levels of performance, the presence, but the tech and creature comforts. We have heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, front lift, digital rear view camera, front cameras, that I already mentioned front lift, blind spot warning, all of these things that I just listed, my 2018 R8 does not have. Yeah. Which I was like, really? We were also mentioning the camera. Yeah. And we actually have our friend Mike from 312 Supercars driving the M5 CS following us at the moment. I love the yellow DRLs on those yeah. cars. It looks so menacing. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And we're not even at red line yet. No, when it just starts revving up a little bit it more. It just keeps going. Like really cool views up here. Downshift, some mega. Yep. We also have carbon ceramic brakes with the Z07 package. Yeah. 
and then we get the nice twisty stuff. Yeah. This is amazing, considering the city of Phoenix and Scottsdale and everything down in the valley yeah. is all just a grid with straight roads. <laughs> Someone's having a birthday up here. They are. <laughs> Funny. To really get to the limit on this car, you have to go on track, so. Oh yeah, completely. Yeah, we. I got to go on the media drive up Pittsburgh Raceway. Yeah. The car is a monster. It is an absolute monster. I mean, the rear tires are 345s. That, that on its own doesn't make much sense. Mm -hmm. 345 rear tires. 21 by 13 inch wide wheels. <laughs> yeah. What is on the Huracan STO? 305. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you got little baby tires in here. Yeah, literally. <laughs> well, it's not good for the cost of these tires. They are, I mean, the wider yeah. they get, the more rubber, the more and expensive they they're are. They're basically made just for this car. Yeah, they so are. So you changed, obviously, from the Cup 2Rs, which, as we were saying, need good conditions. Correct. If it's cold, they're useless. Mm -hmm. They'd be kind of okay-ish now. I don't know how cold it is up yeah. there. Yeah. The problem is they're wasted on the road. That's a rare color. Yeah. That's caffeine. Unusual. So yeah. regular C8 and Z06. Yeah. Whoa, views. Wow. To quote James, views on views? Quite Over. literally. Yeah. <laughs> Down towards the city. So, guess what, Tim? Yeah. It's your time to drive a C8 Z06. Looking forward to it. So, we'll do this. We'll head out, swap around. Oh, wait, electric button down here. Nearly got that wrong. Let's go. Right, here we are. Time to get comfortable in the Z06, make a mess of all of your nice seat settings. It's okay, I've got memory seats. You've got memory. Life's good. Nice and easy. Get belted up, get ready to go do this. Feel a bit antisocial here with all the people around. Although this guy's exhaust is like bigger than yours. He's yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> the, more, the more exhaust you have, the more power, right? Mm -hmm. Although if you go by the Bugatti way, the more exhaust tips you have, the more it costs. <laughs> La voiture noir with however many it's so got like at the back. 16 exhaust yeah. tips in the back. <laughs> I have driven a few C8s. We were in Vegas Stingrays. together in 2020. Indeed. Yeah. The original first ever kind of media drive. But this is the thing, right? When you drive this car literally like this, just gently automatic and whatnot, it's just like a regular Stingray. It's just easy. There's a different engine tone. Yes. You have that kind of higher pitch tone from behind it but it rides this pretty chopped up road really quite well. Like this is plenty smooth enough. And I mean, look at this. This tarmac is not pretty. This tarmac is kind of... It is not racetrack smooth. No, not even slightly. I like how even, obviously we're in Z mode, but even at low RPMs, there's quite a lot of sound from it. So if I go out of Z mode, that's into, back into, yeah, tour. Into tour. Like normal, regular, soft mode we can try out the other modes by toggling through there the, yeah the stock like sport mode or so that goes up from tall there. this to is sport. what the factory sport setup is yeah so we've got steering a little bit harder suspension as well engine shift brake feel ah so it's got brake feel like the bmw's that's cool and then what else do we have do we have a track mode in there, there as is well? a track mode okay that gets like super aggressive yep and they can play with PTM, which is Performance Traction Management. Okay, but I'm gonna put it into Z. How do you go into manual? You press the M button there. Yep. It's these things, you need a car to be like super, you just hop in it and it's, you know what it wants to do, you know where the settings are and what it's after. There's a very solid weight to the steering. Like the amount it stiffens Ooh. up. How do you feel in the passenger seat? It's uh, definitely unfamiliar. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody driven this yet? Yes, I've had a couple friends drive okay. it. So this isn't totally, totally alien. The feel is nice. I said this, I think, a little bit when my E-Ray video that I shot, and of course you've been out in a, an E-Ray on the move. Yes. But we, from a European perspective, in decades gone by, have often just written off American cars by default because there's this like idea and concept that they can't possibly be as good as European supercars, right? Yeah. But this feels like you've literally jumped into a full European supercar. It's really, really dialed in. I mean, you yourself have a couple pretty high performance American cars. Yeah, that's true. Ford yeah. GT, GT500. No, the window just for a second. I don't want to hear a touch more of it. But when you're mid-range, and I think that's one of the things that's really hard for manufacturers to get right, 
but they've done this very well is that mid-range sound and feel that you don't necessarily need to be going Mach 10. I mean, this road would be quite fun at Mach 10. <laughs> you haven't even come close to red line though. No, that's true. Just let it gradually run out on a low gear. It's, uh, it's intoxicating. To reverse, got the nice reversing camera. I would like to be able to pull the paddle and go back into gear. Well, not Chevy possible. apologizes. <laughs> How dare they? Oh, that's cool. There's like every possible. So that's the front splitter view. Yes. That's yeah. nice. Given you do not want to crack that carbon splitter. No. Although you see it's three pieces. So maybe yes. they thought about it. So replacement cost is not the entire splitter. So if you do damage something, it's not going to destroy your no. bank balance to try and fix it. <laughs> actually handles remarkably well because this is tight, twisty, and not a road that is necessarily suitable for a nearly 700 horsepower sports car. The gearbox is brilliant. The GT500 gearbox is good. Americans are just doing gearboxes right at These the moment. These are related. Are they're they? Both, they're both Tremec dual clutch transmissions. That's why. And they both feel quite like a PDK. They feel quite Porsche-esque. Oh, that's cool. When you do museum delivery, you can do a custom little plate. With your chassis number 38. Yeah, number 38. That's and fun. Also, this is a 2023, which is the 70th anniversary of Corvette. Yep. So even though it's not an anniversary car, I've got little 70th anniversary badges. Oh, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. That's okay. Oh, this is a lot of fun, even at sensible speeds. All of a sudden I have a massive urge, except for the massive, massive, massive premiums over MSRP if I was to try and buy one. These things cost a fortune right now. Yeah, that's the that's the hard part of these right now. At MSRP, this is a remarkable car. Yeah, I mean, this is 150 something thousand MSRP, right? right? Yep. But current market adjustment for one spec like yours yeah. with the Z07 is, I don't know, it's the best part of 300 grand. Probably. Something like that. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. A very low option one of these without Z07 just sold at Mecom Auction for $275,000, which is over 150K markup. I mean, that would make this over 300. That would make this car over $300,000. Yes. Good traction. Like, so good grip. 45 section tires out back. Yeah. I mean, PS4 S's, yeah. so you don't necessarily need to get so much heat into them before they start working. And they're brand new. They have like 100 miles. <laughs> 200, maybe. Brand, brand new. This car's already having a good life, being driven properly. Absolutely. I love this. And it's still quite practical because you've got a frunk, you've got luggage space in the back. Yes. It's still a Corvette. It's got all of this tech that we were talking about. Here's where I'm wondering where they're going to go. This is a Z06. We know there's going to be a ZR1 at some point. Yeah. Rupert, higher performance versions. It's going to get pretty impressive what Corvette's going to do, I think. What but I do love the purity think? of the NA. What do you think the ZR1 will be? Will it be this engine supercharged turboed? Will I've it be? Heard rumors, it's this engine twin turbo. Yeah, that and would make sense. And the top dog is going to be the E Ray front electric motor with, with the twin it. turbo, which is allegedly a thousand horsepower. Oh, so they'll be after the they'll be after the ZR1, like a hybrid ZR1. Allegedly, I know sure. No more than nobody's told me anything. Interesting though, but it's easily done. I mean, even if you just twin turbo this engine, you're going to have 850 horsepower. Absolutely. Which is ridiculous. That's... But the, the old CR1 was already 700 and... 755? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, numbers that the are numbers just... numbers are staggering. Yes. Yeah. Completely bonkers. Well, these days when family sedans have 640 horsepower, it's like... <laughs> I like that. And of course, you can take the roof off. You can just pop the roof away in the section at the back. Or you can get the convertible. There's a folding hardtop version yeah. too. Yep. So. And that doesn't take away any of the trunk space either, does it? No, but you don't see the engine anymore. Oh. You can't see. That's why I went Because that with, view is so nice yeah, behind us. I, I mean, half the mm. appeal of mid-engine is you get to see the engine back there, yeah. which is such a work of art. And it costs you $7,000 more or something. That is also indeed accurate. 
I, I certainly ran out of money. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of the shift paddles. I'm sorry to say, they're not my they're not my most favourite thing in the world. They feel a little bit like I don't know, just a bit squishy buttons. How do you feel about the square steering wheel? I like the square steering wheel. Okay. I do like squared steering wheels. Ever since the 177 and the DBS and I don't know, square steering wheels, I'm very cool with. I like those. But I would prefer more of a Ferrari style paddle, you know, more of a, I don't know, more of a like single feel to it rather than the, the softer. I don't really know how to describe it. I like the Huracan paddle shifters a lot. Yeah. Those are awesome. With all of the cutouts and just. And they're fixed. They're, so these are steering wheel yeah. fix. Huracan ones are. No, I, I like, do you know what? Even though the Ferrari ones are, they're column fixed. I do like paddles on the wheel more. Back in days of single clutch gearboxes, if you had paddles on the wheel, obviously you could unsettle a car through a corner. Mm -hmm. But these gearboxes are so smooth, they're not going to unsettle the car in the same way. So shifting in corners is no longer so much of a faux pas as it was. And therefore, I quite like to have them you know, wheel mounted so you don't have to take your hands off. You know, you want to drive a road like this through these corners, keeping your hands literally in position. We need to get you back in a Z06 on a proper track. Definitely. Because I've gotten to do that and it was so, intoxicatingly amazing. So the last time I was here, I went to Arizona Motorsports Park. What about it? Are we going? Fun. Now? Diversion? Racetrack? We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> As views go, not bad, hey? Absolutely. It's gorgeous up here. And the car is pretty nice to look at too. Yeah, not yeah. bad either. We haven't actually really spoken about the wheels. Voss and S21s? Yes, fully forged. They look awesome. Light smoke finish. Changes up the look a little bit from the stock ones, right? The stock ones are really, really dark gray, almost black. So. These are stock size and fitment, right? So Correct. it's 20 at the front, 21 at the rear? Yep, 21 by 13. They're still running stock tire sizes. I just went to the PS4S as we mentioned. A little bit more aggressive offset to kind of fill yeah. out the wheel well a bit better. They are definitely sticking out, poking out slightly out the sides. Just a little bit more. I but like again. the color. I actually went to visit um, Vossen uh, down, down in Miami. Florida. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go stop by there. They manufacture in America, which is pretty awesome. It is very cool. Um, given we're up here with no one around, except for the one car. Couple little revs? Yeah, I think we should. We should have a Couple little, little listen. Couple little revs. Enjoy the sound of this quickly while we're up here. And it's warm and ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> now you need to explain the trick there so it's like a porsche pdk if you're in just park it, it's limited it limits what is it like four thousand rpm barely that was like three thousand yeah three thousand pull both paddles back simultaneously and it lets you go the whole way that's yeah. cool yep that's it's really like cool. awesome i love it and now the fans are running in overdrive yeah. Going down. <laughs> oh well. All fun and games. Well, thank you for the drive in this. One more thing to show you. Yeah? So, this car is so new, it hasn't even been back to my house yet. So, you've still got all the stuff in here. Yeah, this is all the stuff, the car cover. But these right here, what is this, this is how much this is a track car. These are underbody aero strakes. So, they're, you can add them on for going to the track, and it gives you, like, I don't know, more aero. I know more is the body aero. Yeah, these bolt in. But obviously you don't want to run them on the street because no, you'll probably you'll, you'll scrape them. them. Yeah, but this I is- I have this problem with the GT Black Series. It really? scrapes on everything. But yep, this thing is a true, well, these are bigger than I thought they were. <laughs> Window sticker and everything. Yeah. <laughs> these are covers cool. for the carbon ceramic brakes. Wait, covers for the brakes? Yeah, so when you when you take them off, you don't accidentally like chip a rotor or something. Oh, okay. These are brake cooling Can you ducts. The wheels? You got instructions for brake cooling ducts. I like this, it comes with everything. Oh yeah. Car, is there a car cover in here or something? Yeah, that's my car cover. Okay. All this, the stuff. Yep. Like, the, okay, with all the tape. Yeah. Literally ready to go on. This car has not been home yet, so. That's quite fun. Yeah, pretty awesome. And that's just showing off. There you go. Thanks, Dan. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Super awesome car, absolutely love it. Thank you for the drive. That has been a whole lot of fun. Some final thoughts then from driving in Eddie Z06. Steering, in some ways it's kind of Lamborghini-esque, which I've never been the biggest fan of. It's not quite there with McLarens and Ferraris, but it is actually better than my STO, I would say in that respect. The sound is awesome, the noise of this thing. Something that cars here in the US can get away with more than cars in Europe to begin with, in terms of the sound not being quite so restricted with valves, with OPFs, with everything else. Um, I think the Z06 is actually coming to Europe, I think. 
down the line. We do now have the C8s, the regular cars, but they've only started quite recently. They haven't actually been out for as long as they have over here. But this, in this spec, looks the part. The interior is magnificent, as I've said earlier. And to be honest, on a nice road like this, twisting and turning up the mountains, it's a really, really, really good car to drive. If you can get one of these at MSRP, the bang for buck is phenomenal. And that's, I think, what the Corvette has really always been. Obviously, the C8 being the first generation to take the engine from the front to the back, which has been a big talking point, but it does it in such a good way. And the whole idea behind doing that was to maximize the amount of performance that they could bring out of it. They felt they had pretty much exhausted that from the previous Z06 and ZR1. Whereas this thing is a delight to get behind the wheel of. So a huge congratulations to Eddie on his purchase. He's gonna enjoy many, many miles to come with this. I have enjoyed the few miles that I've driven with it today. So thank you very much for watching guys. Do head over to Eddie's channel for a few more experiences and ownership thoughts on this car as well, if you aren't already following. He's been over to the Museum. I've now been out here to drive his car in the US. That's it for this time though. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.